Well, welcome back to Action Mall Intelligence. I'm Eric Greitens. We're joined now by Pastor Jack Hibbs of Calvary Chapel in Chino Hills, California. He's featured in the new documentary, Trump 2024, The World After Trump, which explores the relationship between President Trump and the evangelical community. You can check it out at www.trump2024.film. It's also available on Apple Podcasts, Amazon, and Google Play. Pastor Hibbs, thank you so much for joining us. It's really great to have you on. Thank you, Eric. It's awesome. Thanks. Absolutely. Now, Pastor, before we turn to the documentary, if you could, please, if you would talk a little bit about the relationship as you see it between President Trump and the evangelical community. Eric, I want to thank you for asking it, because so much of what we're hearing and reading about of late in the media is that there's this, just this strange dependency of the evangelical community upon President Trump as, as a person. Mm. And so his character has been brought into question. And how can you support someone who's got all these various things of the past? The evangelical community, Eric, supported and voted overwhelmingly for President Trump because of his policies. Trump had God-honoring policies. And the first one, Eric, was that of a very strong, perhaps the strongest in most recent years, uh, of a pro-life record. Yes. Trump, he legislatively or argued or defended pro-life concerns. And that is the number one rallying point of the evangelical community is the pro-life issue. Well, and Pastor, he was, he was a pro-life president. He was strongly pro-life. He also made more progress in terms of the U.S.-Israel relationship than any president has for decades. Uh, we'd had for decades presidents promising that they were going to move the United States embassy to Jerusalem, but then they got in office and they broke the promise. President Trump kept that promise and he moved the embassy. We also saw the Abraham Accords, historic peace deals in the Arab world. Talk, if you would, about the support in the evangelical community, not only for Israel, but also for the president's policies towards and the relationship that he built between the United States and Israel, please. Yeah, what's absolutely amazing is that President Trump's uh, stand on the defense of Israel was not only forged out of friendship, but from the biblical influence that Trump heard over the years growing up. He knew that Israel was the most mentioned nation in the Bible, that God had a plan for Israel, and, and he understood that. He, he received that from uh, predominantly the upbringing uh, from his mom. That said, there were uh, nurtured relationships. One of them is Benjamin Netanyahu. This, this relationship was one that I know personally that President Trump set as an absolute standard for his presidency, that what he campaigned on regarding the honoring of Israel's desire to have the world recognize that Jerusalem is in fact their capital, uh, Trump did two things. He followed through on his campaign pledge, mm -hmm. but let's remember, Eric, he also enforced what Congress had voted into in 1995 under Bill Clinton, that we were supposed to move our embassy to Jerusalem. Yes. He's the only president that had the integrity to do it. Yes. Now, Pastor, I'm going to ask you to kind of switch gears to just a little bit, right? You've got all of our viewers uh, who are out there, and many of them, understandably, have been frustrated. They were frustrated by what happened during the election. Many of them were distraught about what happened, not only to faith communities, but to the entire country over the course of the summer. Uh, very worried about the rioting that they saw at the Capitol. If you could, please, just talk as a pastor in terms of what we need to do right now in our families, in our communities to maintain hope and how, to help us to revive the republic. Yeah, right now, people ought to turn off the news except your program, Eric. And what they need to do is read, what they need to do is read their Bibles. This, listen, the, the Bible is the book of hope. And families, families need to, moms and dads need to really make the discipline of encouraging, but they're going to need encouragement. Mm. Uh, the children need to know they're going to be okay. We're going to be a family. Stability right now is what everyone needs. And there is no greater stability. For example, when God says in Jeremiah 29, 11, I know 
of the thoughts I think toward you, thoughts of a future and a hope, and to bring your life to a full completion. We need to return back to those biblical truths that our founding fathers quoted and depended upon in our revolution and the creation of this nation. So uh, it's very important more than ever. And and Eric, uh, so much has been stripped away from us. And I wanna say this to your audience, not all of that stripping has been bad. We're seeing overwhelming growth and attendance here at our church. Why? People are searching. We have played a key role in, in ministering to the mental suffering and emotional distress of people who frankly were thinking about suicide, but they came to hear the hope of God in the Word of God. Awesome. And Pastor, one of the things, you know, you just touched on on the Founding Fathers, and one of the things that you've done before, I think you do it a little bit in the the documentary, and, and I've heard you do in other contexts, is kind of put on a historical hat and talk about the role of people of faith throughout history. If you could, just for a moment, kind of put on a historical perspective, because I often find that when we look back, we find that we have a lot to look back on with pride. Uh, We've always found that we can make it through pain and build wisdom. We found that we can make it through suffering and build strength. If you could, please, just take a quick look back at some of these moments in American history and how people of faith and and citizens have come together to make it through some of these harder times, because I think that can also offer a a lot of hope at a moment like this. Yeah, Eric, thank you. Unfortunately, what I'm about to say is going to sound so foreign to people because we're just not taught this in public schools, but very few people stop to realize that where the concept of liberty came from, Thomas Jefferson said the concept of liberty came from Samuel Adams. And when Samuel Adams was asked, how is it that you have such a profound understanding of liberty and freedom? Samuel Adams answered and said, it's from the colonial era pastors known as the Black Robe Regiment. Samuel Adams said he understood from the Bible, from those pulpit preachers, that liberty was given to us by God. By the way, that's the the reason why it's the First Amendment. And from that point on, our nation was founded upon those foundational truths. And this is not my opinion. uh, Harvard University, most, most of your viewers do not know that Harvard, that's John, that's Pastor John Harvard. A a university created for the creation of seminary students and pastors. But all through the American history, what makes America unique in so many ways is that it is the only nation outside of Israel in all of human history that was founded upon Judeo-Christian worldview values. That's not my opinion. France sent Alexa de Tocqueville to America before they did their revolution to see why, why ours was so successful. And de Tocqueville said, it wasn't in our commodious harbors and it wasn't in our strong industry or the power of our uh, workforce. He said, I didn't know what made America great until I went into the pulpits of America's churches. And that's where I found America to be great because America was good. De Tocqueville said, once America stops being good, then America will stop being great. And a lot of people don't know this, the church was the powerhouse of colonial America. And they're incredibly profound words. One of the things that's so so striking about de Tocqueville's work, which our viewers will remember is Democracy in America, is that so many of those insights into American character are just as relevant today as they were when he first first wrote the book. Uh, Pastor, if if you could talk with our viewers a little bit about this documentary that, that you're in. This documentary was put together by a group of people, and I was great, thankfully asked to just play a small role in this. But it was regarding, frankly, the answer or answering the push around the world for a global uh, government. Uh, in most nations of the world, they're looking forward to. They believe they're going to do better if there is a global governance that is centralized. And we were heading in that direction as a nation and there was a pause. And that pause came in the form of this man, Donald J. Trump, who put the doctrine of America first or the mega doctrine as my friend Charlie Kirk puts it. And um, we saw not only America prosper, we saw other nations prosper because we were prospering in these last four years. And it's a documentary that talks about what will be uh, the direction of America, for that matter, the world, whenever Trump leaves office. Because let's all be honest, no matter what you think about Donald Trump, he's a leader. 
Yes. And when Trump leaves the scene, look around the world. There is no other global leader that stands out right now. Donald Trump is the talk of the nations. And when he's gone, uh, sad to say, even with this incoming administration, uh, there is not a sense or the, the uh, attributes of leadership to lead the world. And it's a concerning thought. So the documentary very well goes through what will the world look like when it doesn't have a strong leader? It leaves itself open to the governance of a global type of a United Nations type of government that America will eventually then bow the knee to. Predominantly, that's what it's about. Pastor Hibbs, just 20 seconds left. Uh, any thoughts, 2021, a continued relationship between President Trump and the evangelical community? I think it's going to continue, again, not because it's Trump and his tweets and it's Trump and his hair and it's Trump and his billions, not at all. The evangelical community will rally around Donald Trump so long as Donald Trump stands for the defense of Israel and for pro-life and for religious freedoms. He stands for those and he wins the heart of the American evangelical because those are biblical values. Pastor Hibbs, 10 seconds left. Uh, where can our viewers find you? They can go to jackhibbs.com. Very simple, jackhibbs.com. Everything's there, Eric. Thanks for uh, asking that. Absolutely. Well, Pastor Hibbs, thank you so much for joining us. We look forward to having you back on the show. And folks, stay with us right here at Real America's Voice. Dr. Gina has a great show planned following right after this. We'll see you tomorrow.